Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? I want to touch again a little bit on the whole character generation uh, method um, subject because uh, uh, it was kind of funny. I didn't get a lot of responses, but I won't, the video has only been out for a little while. But I got responses both from uh, you know the uh, kind of O D and D ish sort of side where you know the um, the Moldvay modifiers plus to negative three are a little bit too high um, to uh, if people just wanted to use a point by system. And everything, and we're talking about classic D and D, so we're talking about you know O D and D or or basic. Um, but I stick with the idea of the Moldvay modifiers. Uh, so you know, if you don't know what those are, 18 is plus three, 16 and 17 is plus two, 13 through 15 is plus one, 9 through 12 is zero, and then six through eight is negative one, four and five are negative two, and three is negative three. That, that's about it. Um, you know, the classic idea would be you roll 3d6, and I, I talked about using the 4d6 drop low method. Um, I've also talked about Hedge Hobbit's uh, method where you just, uh, you know, decide, okay, well, I want a guy with a, a net plus two. So we're going to roll a bunch of dice. You know, four dice have uh, you know, one color, two dice have the other color. Whatever number stat comes up, that's the stat that uh, you're either subtracting or um, adding points to. So the four dice of one color are all addition dice. And the other one, uh, the other two uh, dice are subtraction dice. Only caveat is you can't get, you know, a plus four in a stat. So if that happens, you just got to re-roll on the dice, figure out where that plus goes. That, that's, you know, to me, that's an acceptable way of making a character, too, if that's what you're looking for. Um, so some interesting stuff. I mean, this is kind of a boring math video, but I'm going to try not to make it very long because I don't want to do boring math videos. Um, you know, there's another method, too, which is the, the um, you roll 3d6, you re-roll all ones, which really... If you look at it mathematically, it's 3d5 plus 3. Um, so, uh, you know, what do all those different methods do? You know, um, you know, first of all, in 3d6, you're going to roll from uh, a normal, you know, zero modifier. I think it's about 48% of the time. I'm going to round off some decimal points, so don't get mad at me. You can go to anydice.com and figure these out for yourself. Um, 46 low, you're going to be in that 912 range about 41% of the time. And uh, in the, the 3D6 uh, reroll all ones, it's 50% of the time. So it's actually even a little greater. Because mostly what that, that, um, that last method does is it gets rid of the real negative modifiers. You'll have a negative 30% of the time in that 3D6 drop low, where it's like something like 1% of the time in 4D6 drop low. Um, and it's actually half a percent um, in uh, the 3D6. I'm sorry, it's, it's actually 0.1% in 4D6 drop low. You know, 4 through 6 is um, something so like a negative two is about four percent in in straight 3d6 it's one percent in 46 drop below and it's zero just not going to happen in the uh, reroll ones you know obviously uh your next score though the negative ones about 21 percent of the time um you're going to have uh rolling 3d6 you're going to get the negative one in any given score um it's actually about 9% of the time in 46 drop low, so about half that, um, and 8% uh, of the time. So not statistically really that different in uh, 3d6, no ones. So now what about pluses? Um, and this is kind of, you know, you want to, I think the biggest thing we're trying to do with like something like 46 drop low or, or 3d6, no ones is eliminate the negatives as much as possible, or, you know, have less of them. So both of those do that pretty admirably. Uh, as far as 3d6, you're going to get, uh, you know, it's a mirror of, of uh, the, uh, the negatives, obviously. Uh, it's a bell curve. And uh, that's going to give you 20% uh, of the time you're going to have a plus one score in any given ability. It's about 35% of the time, almost 36% of the time in uh, in the 46 drop low. About 34% of the time in, in uh, 3d6 reroll all ones. Then uh, as far as uh, plus two, it's only going to happen 4% of the time, roughly, in 3d6. It's going to be about 11.5% of the time in uh, in 46 drop low, which is actually you know, the, your best chance of getting that number, because it's going to be about 7% of the time in, in 3 to 6 drop ones. And then finally, you know, your, uh, the coveted 18, it's only going to happen about half a percent of, of the time uh, in any given score on the 3 to 6. That's uh, about one and a half time, one and a half percent of the time. So three times as likely in 46 drop low, but still not very likely. And about, uh, you know, it's not even one percent, it's like 0.8 in uh, 3d6 no ones um, probably more importantly than all that junk is what your average score is going to be and you know I, I around these a little bit but it's about you know uh, if you roll 3d6 you're going to get a 14 you're going to get um not only like a 12 and 11 a 10 um about a 9 and like a 7 somewhere around there so you, you, you end up with like a plus one and a negative one you know no big surprise it's a bell curve something like 46 you're going to 
a, yeah, about like a 14, uh, you know, a 15, a 14, a 13, uh, an 11 ish, 10, and uh, about a nine, yeah, maybe an eight, you know. Um, depending on how who reads these things, sometimes they'll say you're going to get a 16, 14, you know, 13, and a, and a eight. So and that's added about plus three. And then finally, uh, you know, the 3d6 drop uh, drop all ones. You're going to get nominally like a 15, 13, um, 12, right around 13, 12, uh, another 12, 11-ish, 10, and an eight. So that that uh, in the final analysis, that's going to you know net you out about a plus one, plus two. Um, overall, so pr probably a little less generous of a method than the at 46 drop low, um, but you're going to have much less chance of getting any kind of um, you know real negative modifiers. Although they're they're pretty about, about pretty much the same. Um, so what does that do in terms of basic? Um, it gives you a character that's kind of survivable. You know, one argument that somebody said was that it makes the characters more uh, similar to one another. And I, I get that. I get that. If it's not your thing, I mean, don't do it. Um, as far as a point by system, I, I wouldn't do a point by system necessarily. But, you know, I, I guess if somebody really wanted to, you could say, all right, we'll take that probability of what those scores are going to be and just arrange your stats to taste. I mean, anytime I've done like a 46 drop low, generally I let you switch two scores. That That's pretty standard. You know, if you had a really hard your heart set on being like, a, you know, a magic user and your intelligence happened to be eight, you know, but you had some other score that was like a 15 or something like that. I'll let you switch them. You know, I'm not, I'm not that much of a jerk. Uh, and, and of course, with like a point by system, you know, I, I suppose you could do that hedge hobbit method and just figure out, okay, well, you're going to have, uh, you know, a net plus two and where do you want to put those? You know, eh, not a big fan. Because you know, it's not about the modifiers. It's really not about the scores that much. You just, you know, in my mind, you want to eliminate a character that's just uh, really weak. You know, you should be a little, a uh, little average in a bunch of, you know, about probably a half his abilities and a little bit above average in half of his abilities. And that's that a pretty survival. That's a pretty survival character. Although honestly, I don't mind playing a guy with a deficit, or uh, you know, that's kind of all average. It's how you play him.